If you want to see your name at the beginning of all of our videos, as well as see exclusive content here on the homestead, please feel free to join our Patreon. Memberships start off at just a dollar a month. And as always, thank you for your support. This is Alpha. Alpha is a great example of when I say get what you can get and get what you can afford. I got Alpha about a year ago for $5 from a local breeder that was no longer going to be breeding rabbits. He is a standard Rex sitting at six and a half to seven pounds depending on the day. He's a bit hollow in the loins and is pinched on that hindquarter, but he has a great balance for what he is and a decent shoulder. He is also the most prolific buck I have ever met. He has never missed a breeding. And in the past year, he has produced almost 150 kits. Alpha and the pairings that we have put him with have produced two standard animals. And I currently have a broken black buck out of him looking to replace Alpha. But this is the buck we've used to introduce chinchillas into our line. And those babies have done pretty well for us at show. He's such a sweet boy though. When it comes to breeding rabbits and bettering your generation, I have always heard the concept of build your barn before you think of painting it. So the idea is you want to get the rabbits type down first. So for instance, if we're talking about silver fox, we want to make sure that their body type is the correct commercial type or as close as possible before we start focusing on fur or their color. But if we are looking at a fur type breed, be that if we're talking about pelts for silver fox, or we're talking about a wool breed such as Angora, it would be up towards the purpose of the animals you're raising. If you're focusing on a wool line breed and you're using that wool to make yarn and that kind of thing, then of course you really want to focus on that fur type, bettering it and improving it for the purpose that you're using. If you have Rex, you really want to focus on their fur type because it's a specific fur type. Silver Fox, with the way their hair stands, it's also part of the SOP, you want to kind of focus on that. But if you are working with specifically meat rabbits and you're only growing them out for their meat purposes, you might want to focus more on things like grow out rate and appropriate confirmation type. Now when it comes to improving type, it just depends. Let's say you have substandard stock and you get a champion winning, you know, all across the board best of breed animal, then it'll take only one generation for you to see improvements. And that can be on fur type, that can be body type, that can be shoulders, that can be hindquarters, whatever it is, you have an amazing animal, it can make changes to your program within one generation. An example of this is strawberry. Pair strawberry up with anything and he's going to help improve those lines. He's just a great buck. But let's say you have relatively all the same quality of animals, it's going to take longer to improve those things. Let's say you have an animal that has amazing shoulders and another animal that has amazing hindquarters and you have to breed them together to get the best quality you want. You might get better in one generation, but odds are it's going to take multiple generations to improve it with the quality animals you have. To see improvements in my blue-eyed whites, it takes me up to three generations to see any major changes because I have to take a blue-eyed white, breed it to a non-carrier to get a carrier to breed that carrier to another carrier to get a blue-eyed white. So it takes multiple generations to even see a blue-eyed white, let alone to see if I'm making improvements to those lines. So there are a lot of factors that go into improving a line. Alright, so I have multiple breeds of rabbit in my barn, but I have two different kinds of conformations in body type. I have compact and I have commercial. So we'll just start with the compact type. This is Strawberry. He is a mini Rex. He is the best rabbit I have confirmation wise when it comes to mini Rex. And that is because when it comes to mini Rex, he is basically the standard of perfection. He is a ball. He is as round as he is tall. He doesn't have a shoulder. He has a nice rump and his fur is just perfection. My only problem with Strawberry is sometimes Mr. Man can get slightly overweight when it comes to the SOP, and he likes to be like three ounces over. 
Other than that, this man has won us quite a few best of breeds and a best of show. So he is absolutely stunning, fantastic, love him. And then this one I dug up from our archives. This is one of my earlier generation of Broken Blacks. And we can all just make fun of it together. And by it, I mean how horrible my lines were when I was starting out. Because we all got to start from somewhere, and I started from a very, very humble beginnings. But this rabbit has a very forward high point. That high point is very flat. Coming off of a very long shoulder. And then we are looking at that hind quarter where because the high point is so forward, it's throwing off the balance of the loins, and this rabbit was also pinched. And if my memory serves me right, she was also too soft. But this rabbit made some beautiful babies and was quickly replaced by one of her daughters. This is Butcher A1 Charlie Charlie 2 at 12 weeks old. At this age, this litter was around three and a half to four pounds, depending on the kit. The side profile on this rabbit isn't horrible, but what really got a kick from the program is a rear view. If you look down at the bottom there, this rabbit is extremely pinched in that hind quarter, causing it to look like it almost has a V there. And of course, we have some hollowness in the loins. Now, when it comes to hollowness in the loins, it can get better as the rabbit gets older and fills out more. But the more filled out it is, the younger it is, the better it will fill in as it gets older. I will say with this litter, when it comes to fur density, I was very happy. And Alpha has been great when it comes to that with his litters. Before we started introducing Alpha, our fur was too soft, and he brings in a nice density to these kits that I have really been enjoying. These comments always get me. For those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Maddie, I'm a homesteader, and I raise meat rabbits. And part of raising meat rabbits is butchering meat rabbits. But I'll get people who are like, animal killer, murderer! Like, I don't know what I'm doing. So comments like these are just funny. But we do raise our own meat. We do rabbits, chicken, quail, and it works extremely well for us. Because we know what we're putting into those animals, we know how they live and how they are taken care of, and therefore we enjoy that more. It works best for our family, and it's not for everyone, and that's okay. And unless you are a vegan or a vegetarian, I do have to add that you are just one step away from this. You're just less attached. Which is fine. If you want to get your food from a grocery store, go ahead. But if you're being hypocritical, dot dot dot, you're also attributing to the problem. But yeah, thanks for the giggle, I suppose. There are some that already touched on this question in the comments below, some of which I will probably be parroting. There are a lot of factors when it comes to choosing a meat animal. How much space do you have? How much is it going to cost? How much do you need to feed your family? How much work do you want to put into raising that animal? We started raising meat rabbits in an apartment. We had a breeding trio when we started out, and we produced enough not only to show, but to have a little bit of meat on the side while having that very, very small space. Now we raise them in a 10 by 10 shed, which is much more accessible for most people. Rabbits can be raised in very small spaces, be that your backyard or in a garage. Rabbits are also very prolific, and they'll have anywhere from 5 to 15 kits per litter, depending on breed. Most commercial meat rabbits will yield 5 pounds of meat anywhere from 8 to 10 weeks. And in non-commercial meat rabbits, such as your Rex and your Silver Fox, you can have the same amount by 16 weeks. And when we see the size of the litters and how often we can breed these animals, that equivalency is equal almost to having a sheep or a goat or a cow. The difference is, is less space and more food efficiency. Rabbits have one of the highest meat to feed ratios there is, meaning they eat very little compared to the amount of meat you get out of them. 
which in this economy is a good thing considering the rising cost of feed. There's also the school of thought that you could start foraging and gathering greens and that kind of thing for your rabbits in a tight pinch. I personally try to avoid that just because of GI stasis and diarrhea, but completely up to the person raising it. So in summary, the reason why we choose meat rabbits is the amount of space we have, how much it costs to raise them, and how efficient they are. Not to mention, we really enjoy rabbits. We show them, we provide show animals to our local 4-H and FFA, and that in of itself is a wonderful community. And having that wonderful community beside you while you're raising your own meat is definitely a plus. But if you are looking at getting into homesteading or being a little more self-sustaining, I highly suggest meat rabbits as a first animal to try for raising your own meat. Unfortunately, the answer to this is not really. And the reason why I say that is when we have a very young animal, we can kind of get an idea of what their really bad parts are going to be very early on. Same with we can generally tell a very good animal by their shape when they're very young. The only difference that age makes is that they fill in a bit better. And by filling in, it can kind of hide some of those problems. So minor problems can be hidden, but very major problems are still very apparent. I'll show you a few examples to kind of give you an idea. So for instance, this little doe, um, I'm actually keeping her for our breeding program to kind of help with the height of the high point. With that being said, her high point is a bit forward and she's a little bit hollow in her loin. And she has just the slightest pinch on that back end. This is her at eight weeks. And then here again, we see her at 12 weeks. Her high point is still forward and she's still a bit hollow on that loin, but it's a little more hidden because she has filled in more. Because she has more muscle, more fat, it's a little harder to see the minor problems, but they are still there. They're just not as apparent. Here is blueberry at four weeks. At four weeks, it's very hard to tell whether or not a baby is going to be absolutely brilliant, but what we can see is a general roundness. The high point is where it needs to be. We don't really have a pinch. We don't have the muscle covering, but she's generally round. And here she is. I think this was about 10 weeks. We have a very nice profile, very round, with still a very nice correct form and covering. This is the final example I'll give, but we have this little chocolate baby, a nice roundness a little long in the shoulder, but generally that back end and hind quarter are pretty nice. And then here as an adult, we're still having that problem in the shoulder, but we still have that nice roundness and high point off towards the back half of the rabbit. So as you can see, we can kind of get an idea of what these rabbits are going to look like when they're very young. So very blatant, obvious problems can be spotted young and then just get perpetuated as they get older. They just get better definition in that muscle and fat to hide them. Which is also why you'll hear me talk about keeping the top two or three out of a litter. They'll have a very nice bone structure. I'm just waiting for them to get older to see how the fat and muscle fills in around them. Because you can have a very nice rabbit with a great conformation but if it doesn't form the appropriate amount of muscle, then it can kind of feel a bit off. And that's where we start talking about condition of a rabbit. When it comes to this question, I would venture to say yes, the quality of the rabbits that you butcher does matter. And this can be beyond a standpoint of the SOP and show rabbits because of course you want to get the best quality possible when improving your lines and getting better and better. If you are just focusing on meat rabbits, you want the highest quality possible in that you breed your lines better for faster grow outs, larger litters, better mothers, and a bunch of other factors to improve your lines how you see fit to incorporate into better lines for your homestead. Because at the end of the day, the closer you work to perfecting your lines, the more beneficial it's going to be. 
If your meat rabbits are currently growing out and it takes them 16 weeks to hit five pounds, maybe start slowly working on it only being 14 weeks and then 12 weeks. And this can be through selective breeding or buying new stock to improve your lines when you are ready. A piece of advice that has always been pointed out to me by mentors that it costs just as much to feed a good quality rabbit than it does a bad quality rabbit. When raising rabbits, there's quite a few options when it comes to this question. But when traditionally speaking, when it comes to raising meat rabbits or show rabbits, what I tend to do is I will have at least two cages open. And the reason behind this is it will give me room to separate out grow outs by male and female away from mom when they are ready to wean. Because although we do have a faster growing breed such as Californians, which can go from weaning to slaughter, we also have some breeds that are longer to grow out, such as our Rex and our Silver Foxes, which will require separation from their mother and some extra time to grow out. On top of having those two pins open for grow out, I also recommend having a singleton cage open for the potential of having a really nice doe or buck that you would like to keep out of a litter. This just allows you the opportunity to have a chance to grow out something longer if you really like a certain aspect of a rabbit. So that would give you three cages open before you would breed a doe. With that being said, you don't have to run your barn like this. If you prefer using tractors or you prefer keeping your does with their mom for longer, do what works for you. There's a lot of ways that you could swing this to allow yourself to have grow outs with fewer cages. Whichever way you go, just remember that rabbit math is very similar to chicken math in that it can get out of hand very quickly and when starting off with a duo or trio you can very easily get into the double digits very fast so just be prepared for that <laughs>